All right, we are now live. Um, hello, everybody. Welcome to the next Paradigm Shift in Educational co Comedy, talking about um, copyright, decentralization, and open bay, and what those things were, are, where they're going, what they all have to do with each other, so on and so forth. And here we have Rich General Tate with his new setup, so that's why we see a completely new view of him there. Why don't you uh, tell us what happened with that, Rich? You're at a totally different angle. Yeah, um, got a new computer screen for Christmas. Uh, pretty <coughs> kick-ass. Put my old computer screen right there. Put the webcam on top of that because my new screen is got a thin enough top that the camera will balance on it. So that's why you have a new angle. But it's a dual screen setup, so it's much better, and I think the lighting is much better, and you know, the overall presentation is better. So, like, is the is one screen split into two, left and right, or is it the same one screen being projected to two places simultaneously? Um, I've got my main screen, and then I've got a extra digital kind of monitor, basically. I can move tabs over onto the other screen. It's kind of for multitasking. Oh, okay. So, so, so that way if I'm, you know, I can watch YouTube videos and be typing a Word document at the same time simultaneously. That's very very interesting. Very cool. So you have a, a card in there that, that's able to split off the views. you got one going one way and one going the other way. Yeah, I got, yeah, it's a dual monitor setup. I mean, it's hooked up to the back of my tower, so. They're not dual clone screens. I mean, it's not like I'm on both screens at once. It's got my main screen and then my other screen, which is for all my other stuff that, you know, is for all the extra stuff that I want to put on another screen. All right. Well, that's cool. Um, speaking of screens, I'm going to go into screen share mode because our topic here is going to require some illustration. Okay, is it successfully activated? Can you see it? Yes, I can. Okay, cool. So, obviously, the first tab that we have here says Ignore Ends, because I think it's important to first cover what ignorance actually is, because even people, a lot of people who are extremely intelligent um, and know lots of things about lots of stuff are still ignorant to a lot of things, um, and copyright is one of those things where people tend to buy into the general perpetuated meme fairy tale in regards to copyright. And then they think that that is what copyright is. And then when somebody tries to tell them, no, that's not quite right, they're like, hey, you're insulting my intelligence and you're calling me stupid because I know what copyright is, so fuck you and blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> so I wanted to first go into what ignorance actually is. Ignorance is ignore ends. To be ignorant does not mean you lack intelligence. It means that willfully of your own free choice, you are ignoring information that makes you feel extremely uncomfortable. Society teaches us all to do this, so we all begin our lives in a state of ignore ends or ignorance. This does not mean you're an idiot. So there is no absolute reason or rule that states that you must become butthurt and rage against information that makes you feel uncomfortable. You could choose to open-mindedly explore new information. Of course, you can rage against new information if you want to. That is your right as a free will sovereign human being to do so. It is simply required that you do so. So a lot of people think that ignorance and stupidity are the same thing. So when they get called out on being ignorant on something, they take it as an attack. Like, what do you call me, stupid? You're a 
dick. I'm not stupid. You're stupid. I got 10 PhDs and went to six colleges and wrote a thesis on nut sacks and I know everything about everything. You're the one who's stupid. So people like, you know, they 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 kind of they kind of rage a bit. Um, so now I'm going to switch to this screen here. Copyright infringement. We're totally okay with it, but only if we are the ones who are doing it against you. We see Microsoft, RAA, Apple, Motion Picture Association. And I've kind of seen seem to be getting like nudged lately by the universe to do this video, and I've had all sorts of synchronicities involving copyright and all that pop up. So kind of taking that as a hint, and even today, I go to my computer, I check DeviantArt, and lo and behold, what do we have here? Someone by the name of Dowelfin, even talking about corporate copyright infringement seems quaint. Let's talk about corporate espionage, murder, warfare, and a ton of other types of major crimes first. And I think this makes a good point in and of itself, like the idea that, again, what people think copyright is and what it actually is being two different things so when you're when you're talking about the generally accepted meme and trying to discuss and debate within that meme it just becomes completely irrelevant it's like trying to ask the marital status of the number five or the political orientation of a tuna fish sandwich people don't even realizing that it's the whole line of questioning that's irrelevant because any answers that you get to something are only going to be as good as your, your line of questioning. And if we're asking stupid questions, our answers are really going to be limited. Or if we're asking ignorant questions, either way, whether someone's asking a stupid question or an ignorant question, the end result is going to be incredibly narrowed information. And the funny thing is, is the nature of what copyright was originally intended to be versus what it's become kind of falls along the lines of, shall we say, the more um, the more major uh, corporate atrocities, you might say. So this is kind of moving, you know, right in the direction of uh, this person's suggestion. So first, let's go into what copyright was originally intended for. So. Back in the day before copyright, <clears throat> there was a serious problem. Let's say somebody created something, you know, whether or not it was a song or a, an artwork or, or whatever the hell it was, somebody created something. And you had one original creator of whatever this something was, whatever creative work. And then you got like, you know, five or six trolls, whatever, that like it and they see the merit of its potential popularity. So then they all hijack it and say, hey, this is mine, I did this. So, you know, you got like six, seven people all saying, this is mine, I did this. And really, it was it's only one of theirs, only, only one was the one that actually did it, and everybody else is just being a little troll. And there was no way to end the debate of who actually created the work and, and who didn't. So copyright was originally created for two main points. Number one, so that no one could jack your shit and be like, oh yeah, I created it, when really, no, they didn't. And the second point as to why it was created, it wasn't created for what it's being used for today. What it's being used for today is this. A copyright holder creates a piece of content, and they're like, okay, I, I got this content out here, I created it, and it's cool that you guys really like it. So I'm going to take that as a big penis and shove it up everybody's butt and dominate you and harass you and DMCAs and be a total tyrannical Nazi, and I'm going to force my will against you using my copyright penis to do it. And so it becomes about control and domination of others. It's no longer about money. It's no longer about profit. That's the excuse people make, of course. Well, that's, that's holding back my profits. And, and No, actually, it's really kind of not. Um, 
and this is the the point where people who are in ignore ants start to get a little butthurt about. As soon as you start saying that, it's like, oh well, well you're just a criminal and you support theft, so I'm not listening to another word you're saying. And that, okay, fine. Well, anybody watching this or or listening to this who feels that way, you can just hit hit stop or close out the window right now or whatever because you don't want any differing perspectives. You don't want to look at other information that might be there. You just want to feel all justified in your paradigm and shake your fist and whatever. So those people are more than welcome to leave right now if you want to. I respect your free will right to do that. So these these aren't the droids you're looking for. So these aren't these aren't the droids you're looking for, so move along. Um, as far as the people who are kind of curious just about, hmm, what's what's Dave talking about here? What what is this? You know, what what is going on with all this copyright stuff? I'm curious to hear his perspective. You know, the people that are looking to actually explore other information. Well, you know, stick around because this is about to get interesting. So, um, with actual copyright the way it's supposed to be used um, let's say you're a copyright holder and you create you know some work or another and let's say people use it and yeah people even make their own money off it copyright was not designed to prevent people from doing that what it was designed to do is so that as they are using and promoting your work while they're promoting it so first of all you're getting more well known as they're doing this and you don't have to pay them for the free advertising and secondly you are entitled to a piece of whatever monetary pie that they make off it so if you really look at it it's a good thing let's say you have 10 people that have made derivative works out of your work or even if they take the original work and they're using it in in different ways and money is coming in from that you now get a piece of that pie from each of those ten people whereas if you were being a domineering Nazi and saying no you're not allowed to use that then there would be no pie to have any piece of and you wouldn't be getting anything and you'd actually be sabotaging your own profits because now you're saying no you can't make profit and share that with me I'm not letting you give me money you're not allowed to use that at all I don't want your money so you see when you look at it that way you clearly see it's about about domination and control it's not about money at all with these people it's about domination and control so that's what copyright has turned into and it's turned into that to such an extent where you know less than one percent of the absolute big top corporate big boys can just wave their cocks in everybody's spaces and say okay we're gonna jack your copyright because we can and you know we got all kinds of lawyers and stuff and and you don't so fuck you we're gonna do what we want and you know we're gonna control our copyright and everybody else's copyright and you know Heil frickin Hitler and so copyright has become a mechanism that is preventing most people from making money and is actually allowing their particular copyrights to be stolen and trampled upon and used however because the corporations just come in and do whatever they want. I mean, you know, look at kind of the pros and cons of things like YouTube. Like the pros are, okay, if you have original content and you put it up on YouTube, and you monetize it and other people share it out freely then you're making money on that because the more they share it out the more money you're bringing in because more people are viewing it and that content is monetized so that works really well for you but now let's say you're not a big major corporation you're an individual so you're making money on your original work and as per fair use let's say some mainstream band comes across it they really like it and they want to use like a 10 second clip from it in some song they did or whatever right so now that 10 second clip becomes a part of their song uh, you know their music video or whatever that is for the most part their original work but they're using your little 10 second clip as per fair use and they can do that and that's okay um, 
But now the problem is, is when that enters into YouTube's content matching system, now that system thinks that the entirety of your works is this other person's works because that 10 second clip is included in theirs but that 10 second clip is a part of your original work so now all of the sudden your original work is getting third party matched or DMCA takedown or whatever the case may be because some mainstream nutsack wasn't thinking straight when they used your 10 second clip and now the content matching system is totally bending you over and screwing you over and, and screwing your copyright that you have full 100% rights to. Now you're getting screwed because you are not a big corporation. And if you try to go ahead and appeal that and get that resolved, um, it's, it's difficult to get YouTube to correct anything without big huge lawyers pointing a proverbial metaphorical gun at YouTube's head saying you better do this or we're gonna unleash the dogs of war so the only ones that can do that really are the you know musicians who just inadvertently jacked your shit in the first place so you then have to hope and pray that you can get a hold of them and that they're gonna be sensible and that they're willing to say, oh, our bad, we're sorry, we didn't know this was going to happen. Um, we'll, uh, we're, we'll be more than happy to talk to YouTube and, and nag them about, you know, having that, you know, undone and correcting everything. So, you know, you can have your copyright back in its, you know, proper order there. But if those musicians or that label or whatever doesn't care and they're just like haha ah, we're big corporate musicians so what we just jacked you we don't care we're the big boys you're the little small fish we don't care you bow to us you're our servants you're you're our bitch we do what we want if you don't like it come up with big time huge expensive lawyers to fight us in court on it otherwise screw you we win you are the weakest link goodbye so you can see how copyright has then now become a domination mechanism rather than than something that's actually you know protecting people's you know right to credit to their work and actually allowing people to make money from their work instead it's become a system of jacking and screwing and you know he who has the biggest corporations and lawyers can screw everybody else so it's not really a fair system as far as what it's become. And if you look at US copyright law itself, we see copyright.gov, so on and so forth. Um, you can look at this yourself. But essentially what it's stating, it's talking about the doctrine of fair use, is that it's a bit of a slippery slope, but um, section 107 contains a list of the various purposes for which the reproduction of a particular work may be considered fair, such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. And if you you know you you look into the full quote of the actual fair use documentation, it'll even go so far as to stipulate that you know in the event of something like an audio or video recording you can actually freely use the entire thing copy distribute whatever as pertains to you know nonprofit use um, educational so on and so forth so even if it's not a commentary it's not taking a, a clip for a piece of journalism but it's something that's educational and you're trying to forward people's education that by law you can do that it's not a not a violation although of course the original copyright holder could then protest that and say oh we're the big bad corporations and and you're horrible for defying our godly right to rule over you so we're gonna bend you over and rape you and so on and so forth but as you can see the whole premise of fair use as listed here is about maintaining integrity and fairness. The purpose and character of the use, including whether such use is of commercial nature or is for nonprofit educational purposes, the nature of the copyrighted work, the amount and substantiality of the portion used 
in relation to the copyrighted work as a whole, the effect of the use upon the potential market for or value of the copyrighted work, so on and so on. So, you know, you can look at all this and you see there's a set of, you know, variables at work because, again, regardless of how you use it, as long as you're not um, using that work in, in such a way that misrepresents the original copyright holder and you're not throwing them under the bus and any profits that might, you know, potentially come in as a result of you creating a derivative work from that, you know, as long as you're more than happy to, to give them their piece of that pie, then there typically is no problem. Now, this gets into the, shall we say, the, the new paradigm of where this stuff is, is going. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have heard of the Pirate Bay and about BitTorrent and about the whole idea of quote-unquote internet piracy, well, I'm going to make a, a very bold statement. I'm going to say that, no, I am, I am not for at all any sort of jacking or thievery of anyone's content profits or anything like that. And with that said, I will state that in 2014, I believe... This is going to be a bit radical, but I believe there is no such thing as internet piracy due to the fact that the whole nature of what content is, how it's distributed, and how money ha is made off of it has changed dramatically and is continuing to move in a more dynamic direction. Um, the old idea with what used to be deemed as internet piracy and so on and so forth I'm getting some feedback from your end, Rich, there for a second. Yeah, okay, it's subsiding now, but for a second I just got, like, blurred out. Um, so if you could mute, that would be helpful. But anyway, so, um, you know, back in the day, like in the 90s or something, you know, the idea of, you know, Internet piracy was completely valid because the marketplace was very different. Um, back then it... it very well could have, you know, hurt the profits of a company that was trying to, you know, sell a piece of music or a game or, you know, whatever it was that, you know, if you just put it out there, then, you know, now no one has any reason to buy it. And so you've just, you know, you've screwed over what's rightfully theirs. And that was valid in that period of time. But as the Internet started to evolve, um, you might notice that, you know, with the whole Napster fiasco um, in, like, 1999 and moving, you know, into the new century, the Recording Industry Assholes Association, the RIAA, was not um, butthurt about profits being lost. As a matter of fact, as a result of Napster, CD sales went up 60%. Yes, went up. So you might be thinking, why would they be scared about profits going up and why would they act as if anything would affect their profits? Well, the whole profits thing was an excuse. They didn't want people to know that it actually went up. Their whole thing was the RIAA is used to being the dominating force in, in the music industry. You know, the threat of you better obey us or you'll never work in this industry again holds absolutely no weight or water whatsoever. If anybody out of their garage or in their basement who has real actual talent can put together a music CD or whatever online and make money from that themselves online, if they can go on Napster or whatever and put their music out there and get themselves known, and then the CDs that they have end up being sold because of that, and they end up gaining followers, and they end up making money on concerts and, you know, whatever else. Um, if they don't need the RIAA to do that, then that is a big, huge threat to the RIAA from their point of view. They, they kind of have this feeling like, wow, we're being made obsolete. We're, we're losing power. 
we don't have the power to dominate and control everyone else's content anymore. We don't have the power to enslave everybody else anymore. The slaves are setting themselves free. Oh no, we can't have this. This is bad. So they threw a big fit about that. And you know, you can research into this yourself. And now let's also look at the idea of like broadcast TV and radio. If allowing people to experience content free of charge was something that infringed upon profits as opposed to actually making more profits, then why are TV and radio, why have they been allowed to exist? Think about it. What happens when music is played on the radio? It becomes available to more people. More people know about it. They get to hear bands and groups and whatever that maybe they had never heard of before. And as a result, they go to the concerts, they buy the CDs, so on and so forth. And no one forced them to pay to listen to that radio station. No one forced them to pay to have that song go through their high quality sound system and awesome speakers and maybe even get recorded to their high quality digital cassette tape or to mp3 or to whatever it is. They didn't pay for that privilege. Yet, even though they're able to do all these things, they still go out and they buy the CD and they still attend the concerts and so on and so on. And, you know, as a result of that being broadcast on the radio station, this band, this group, whatever, is making all this money that they would not have made otherwise because no one would have even known they exist. Same thing with TV. You know, what happens when you take a movie and put it on TV and then you take that movie and put it out on DVD? Well, now all of a sudden everybody wants the DVD. You know, they want that DVD or Blu-ray at this point. You've got that now. Um, they want the DVD and Blu-ray versions, and they want all the extras and the little fancy menus and, and whatever the hell. And they're, people are more than happy to go out and buy the DVD, buy the Blu-ray disc, despite the fact that it aired on TV and they were, watch it, they were able to watch it for free. They might have even recorded it on their VHS tape. Even better. They might have a digital recording system that is recording the stream in full HD or Blu-ray or whatever quality, full kick-ass quality. So now they've recorded a broadcasted version of this content that is full awesome quality. So, gee, why would they go out and buy the Blu-ray disc or the DVD of it or whatever? Well, guess what? That's what people do. And because they saw it aired on TV, because they saw it in the theater, because they saw it on the internet, because they downloaded that pirated copy of it, because they heard it on the radio, because they downloaded the MP3, that is why they are reaching into their wallet for their credit card and giving these people the money. Because without that free content being put out there, they might not know that that song or that group or that movie or whatever even exists. And so those content creators would not you know, be making any money on it. Then, like I was saying about YouTube, the whole idea that you can put out content for free and then monetize it and make money that way. Let's take it a step further. Here we have TSU. I've done videos on this before. So basically, what's TSU? Well, you know how Facebook has their little ad revenue systems and they make money on ad placement and they don't share any of that money with you. They're like, hey, thank you for using Facebook. Fuck you. We keep all our money. Um, TSU does profit sharing with their ad revenue. So the more popular you get on TSU, obviously the more of that money you're bringing in because the more ads, you know, your posts and your content and whatever is displayed. Whereas, you know, if you gain, you know, two million followers on Facebook or whatever and you're getting 100,000 views to your Facebook page a day, well, is Facebook paying you for that? Of course not. They're not giving you anything. 
whereas TSU gives you a very generous piece of that pie because they give you 90% and then they take that 10% that they make invested in other more lucrative markets and then that profit that comes back helps them continue to <coughs> excuse me build up the TSU service better so now imagine you're a copyright holder you know you got a music video or whatever and you put that on YouTube and you know that that's monetized so the more people who watch it the more money you make now it gets even more beautiful one of those viewers let's say they have a popular TSU account right so they go ahead and they post that video right here on TSU so now TSU's advertisers are paying TSU to pay this other TSU using person to then post that video on TSU and as a result of that video being posted on TSU even more people see the video and as a result of that video being seen the original copyright holder that owns that video is making money by default of that so from their from their perspective some fifth party is paying a fourth party so that that fourth party can pay a third party to advertise their content for free and it's a beautiful system and if we look at things like BitTorrent if we apply those concepts to BitTorrent, there is huge future potential for the for the BitTorrent system to be used in a in a very similar way to all the things we were just discussing. So back to the whole issue of Pirate Bay. They just recently um, in December, I do believe it was, they they took Pirate Bay down. Um, they got raided, and the way Pirate Bay um, does things to the best of my understanding they have something like 17 corporate hosted virtual machines or something like that in cloud space somewhere but their Achilles heel is they still need one central point to coordinate between all of them and it's that central point that got raided and after that you know I was saying to you know to Rich privately in private conversation I was just like you know if they would just open source that shit and just turn that into like an end user application or something instead of relying on one centralized point then the the whole idea of the pirate bay would be turned into just this dynamic decentralized cloud networking sort of thing that couldn't be taken down because no, no matter how many individuals you take down the network still is on so apparently I was hoping that this might be the straw that breaks the candles back on this although I in my opinion I was thinking well you know people apparently need to be pushed pretty hard in order to go in these more innovative directions and I don't know if this was hard enough. People do have the whole societal Stockholm syndrome thing going on, so I don't know if this is hard enough. Apparently, it was hard enough. I'd like to introduce you to Open Bay. And here's what Open Bay has to say about itself We, the team that brought you ISO Hunt and OldPirateBay.org, bring you the next step in torrent evolution the Pirate Bay source code. Torrent sites like ISO Hunt. And the Pirate Bay gave us lessons that would be a crime to ignore. But boom, shh. individual torrent sites are easy targets. This code will enable individuals with minimal IT skills and basic server equipment to create a Pirate Bay clone on their own domain. We want to give you an opportunity to speak your mind, determine needs, and be active participants in the evolution of the old PirateBay.org. A lot of requests were received for a wide range of features, but we want to emphasize the development process. So we call to the colors of this enormous and devoted community to create new feature requests and code those features. We call out to the torrent community to join us, uh, to join in to develop and enhance this engine to create a modern and 
advanced website that every user all around the world would want to use. Well, this is, you know, freaking Paul Revere holding his musket in the air screaming, so to speak. Um, it's totally like a digital revolution here. It's the beginning of the decentralization process. And seeing as this is simply just a bunch of scripts that you can, you know, drop into a, a web directory and boom, boom, bing, you know, instant pirate bay, you're hooked into the decentralized network. Um, you know, because it's that easy, the next step would be to create it as an end user application. That would not be a very difficult next step, but obviously, you know, they're going to want to, you know, perfect the API a bit more and get things, you know, as perfect as possible on the server side of things and then move into actually turning the Pirate Bay itself into a freaking BitTorrent client to where it can search within itself and, and do all of this, and it's pretty badass. And I'm going to play for you right quick a, a short video that someone by the name of Alex Duncan made on this uh, very subject, and I think he explains it uh, fairly well. So let's take a quick 2 minute and 38 seconds to go over that. All right, guys. A while ago, the police decided to raid Pirate Bay, and since there is no Pirate Bay anymore, I mean, like Pirate Bay does not exist. Let's go. Let's go look it up. PirateBay.org. It absolutely does not exist anymore. What happened to Pirate Bay? Well, this article right here will be able to tell you exactly what happened to Pirate Bay so far. Now, as far as it seems like, Pirate Bay isn't going to be coming back up in a bit. Or not for a while, but if you want to use old Pirate Bay, it's right here. This is the old version of Pirate Bay. You can use this instead. Um, I but anyways, this is the old version of Pirate Bay that you can use. But as you can see, they left a uh, They uh, left a little message about the Pirate Bay. It was created by the ISO Hunt team, and you can go ahead and use it to, to search up stuff. So you can use that instead. Now, if for other people, if you want to make your make create and run your own Pirate Bay, it's called Open Bay. ISO Hunt To. It's a GitHub resp respiratory that you can literally use to create your own Pirate Bay website. All you have to do is download the source, upload to it to your website, and install the scripts. That's it. Literally make your own Pirate Bay website. Now, I am not saying any information on whether or on how to do it or any of that type of stuff, but if you want to do it, go in the description bar and you can do it. Now, if if the now this is for a disclaimer for anybody who watches my videos, I am not held responsible for whatever actions you do. This is only an educational purposes only. Um, if the police or Google, if you guys want me to shut, take off the video, I will gladly take off the video, no problem. Do not report it. Just message me or, of course, get a hold of Google or email me, and I will. I will take the video off. But if it's not from an official source, if the email is not from an official source, then I'm not going to be taking the video off. Thank you, and have a great day. Alrighty. Um, yeah, so that video was from December. And, of course, to update things in the now... The Pirate Bay is supposed to be returning on um, February 1st. So we see the nice little um, countdown clock here. Hopefully we can all see that. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it says we are TPB, and it's the piratebay.se forward slash browse, and it's got the counter 28 days, 2 hours, 51 minutes, and the seconds tick down. So, um... Yeah, the people are, are definitely, uh, you know, 
pushing back because BitTorrent is not about piracy. It's about not only the the freedom for content distribution and derivative works and so on and so forth and for educational information to be passed around and etc cetera, etc cetera. but it's also <coughs> representative of the new business models that are in the process of, of being developed and used and that stand to make everyone a whole lot more money a whole lot more money and it's just that the the old guard that is more about domination and control and metaphorically ass raping everyone else and being a little Hitler bitch is not really all that concerned with money because they have more money than God. What do what do they care about money? <laughs> you know, it's what do, they don't care. They have all the money they could ever use. They don't care about money. They care about domination and control. They care about being a control freak and dominating everyone else and controlling your lives. And that's why things like um, organized crime and war, which is a racket, which is an industry, military industrial complex, <clears throat> um, you know, genocide, all this and that. The entire world is being, you know, treated like a big game of chess or checkers or go or whatever you want to call it um, you know it's it's being treated like a game at the expense of everyone else and the people are finally starting to get sick of it so you know the more we get pushed the more we're pushing back and instead of pushing back by doing something stupid like you know throwing a garbage can through a store window or setting a newspaper machine on fire or whatever, you know, shaking your fist and, you know, being stupid sort of thing, you know, people might used to do in the past. Now, people are starting to use their brains and think intelligently and, you know, under understand the dichotomies at work and asking themselves, okay, well, what's going to be fair for everybody and, you know, what's going to take down the old paradigm and bring up the new one and in such a way to where no matter what the old guard throws at it, it's useless. It would be like lining up a bunch of military tanks on the beach as a tsunami is inbound and yelling at the tsunami, Tsunami, stop and reverse course, otherwise we'll open fire. And of course the tsunami is not going to reverse course, so all the tanks open fire and the tsunami absorbs every single hit, but the tsunami is still coming towards the shore. So the tanks just get completely owned when the tsunami makes landfall. So yeah, th these are the sort of, of forces of consciousness that, that we're talking about here, that the, you know, the will of the people as it awakens to the idea that being a bunch of control freak, dominating Hitler butthurt bitches is not good for humanity, it's not good for the planet, it's suicidal, it's self-destructive, and humanity is growing up and it's it's wanting better things for itself. And, you know, a lot of us are finally <clears throat> in the process of getting over our addictions to needing everyone to do everything for us and being little whiny baby bitches and insisting that we have babysitters and instead of pointing outwards and saying, I wish somebody would do something about that. We're starting to realize, hey, we are somebody. I'm somebody, you're somebody. And that, you know, we've all got a little piece of the puzzle and that if we all do what we can do and, and work together collectively, it only takes a spark to to get a fire going. So yeah, I mean, I think it's really cool to see, and we're going to be seeing a lot more of this, and as I said in a previous video, I I really think 2015 is going to be an action year, and, you know, so far, so good, in, in my opinion. Things are, you know, already getting off to a start of, you know, action being taken, and, you know, people not so much getting, you know, but hurt and expecting everybody else to to do everything and starting to take some initiative and some responsibility and ending the blame game so yeah I think it's really cool to see and with that I digress for the moment and 
I will let Rich um, get in his two cents, what, whatever his two cents is that he wants to get in. Um, nothing really to say. I mean, I'm just pretty much in agreement. Got nothing really to add or nothing that I can really say. We can add to any of those points. Pretty much not much to say. So. Well, then what then is your opinion of what you think is going to be happening for this year as far as being an action year and moving in these directions? And, you know, what what kind of unfolding do you personally feel is going to be taking place? Obviously, your opinion is as valid as anyone else's. You're not making an opinion yeah, on that. Like I said, Ed, every point you've wanted to make, I really don't feel I have anything to say. I'm being honest in that. <laughs> But as to the question, personally, I'm in agreement. Yeah, 2015 is going to be a uh, year of action. It's going to be a year where people, average individuals, stand up for their liberties and do what they need to do and take care of business, clean a house, you know, shuffle a new deck of cards, get a new dealer, and, you know, any other analogy you want to put into that, into that, uh, category. I mean, it's pretty much the 1776 type of year, you know. It's going to be a year where average individuals stand up for, you know, personal integrity, expression, and, you know, the like. And with a bit more intelligent action rather than fist shaking and butt hurting, but rather based on actually learning to understand the mechanisms at work and the psychologies and, you know, everything from metaphysics to quantum physics to biology to neurology to psychology to technology to everything under the sun instead of seeing information as our authority and bowing down to masters and gurus and looking for other people to tell us what to do. We start to kind of use our own noodle. We start to use what God gave us up here and, you know, realize that, you know, we actually have the ability for critical thinking and discernment and we can figure things out and actually grow up instead of adulthood being a, a state of extended adolescence, so. Yeah. So, I think that's really all there is to say on this. We've gone over copyright. We've gone over why decentralization is important and how that works and, you know, with like the tsunami wave. And uh, we've gone over what, you know, open, open Bay is and why BitTorrent is actually important to the evolution of online business that, you know, the, the old idea of internet piracy is going away like the Model T and the dinosaurs. So, with that, I think I will close. Um, thanks, everybody, for watching, and we will see you next time.